a good way I, lo- I like to look at it is the difference. And obviously this is you know where the, the term decentralized finance comes uh, in where decentralized meaning I have a PC, it's my personal computer, nobody else has access to that. You have your PC and we don't need a centralized body or system or platform to agree on a transaction. There's this single source of truth, uh, um, which is uh, mathematically based, the the encryption behind uh, uh, a very difficult algorithm to crack. And that's um, a transaction that happens from my PC to your PC is verified by this single source of truth. And that's what makes it possible um, without having a central body to verify that transaction between us. And in this example, a central body could be a bank. Mm-hmm. And then that kind of opens up the, discu- the, the point you brought up uh, with China, mm-hmm. right? where uh, you mentioned Visa is uh, not accepted everywhere in China, where blockchain is acceptable generally you know, um, uh, in China. And, and so you know, the common person, mm. everybody knows Visa, MasterCard, right? The world works on Visa and MasterCard. You know, that, that's what people know today. And um, which is, you know, banking has evolved uh, to a sense to be digital. So there's, you know, online banking, you know, we, we, we can, we have access uh, to our bank accounts uh, digitally. Mm. And then that links up, you know, to our physical cards where we're able to transact and, you know, you know, buy whatever goods or services we want uh, in China, for example. So let's talk about that. So, and I think we've kind of touched it, you know, what the difference is, but, you know, the difference between Visa and MasterCard, and that is a form of digital uh, payment, Mm -hmm. you know, digital uh, financial, um, you know, digitally. And so is blockchain, but what is the main difference there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, it's it's a very good point. Uh, just to clarify that. Um, so, back to the basics: Visa, and Mastercard are essentially two American companies. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, the what they are very good at is they have very good technology for uh, online payments. So, Visa network, uh, Mastercard network, they are actually built to facilitate payments and that's all what those protocols do Uh, now blockchain for example it does that as well so uh, and blockchain blockchain is built to facilitate different forms of transactions either financial transactions which are the transactions of visa mastercard or non-financial transactions what is a non-financial transaction for example a message i sent to dinas for example That's an exchange of data. So this exchange of data is based on blockchain system or can be based on a blockchain system. By the way, nothing is super efficient. So blockchain is not for every, it's not fit for every purpose. Uh, Don't get me wrong because um, sometimes people think like, you know, there is a nice new technology and it's the solution to every problem. No, it's not. just to clarify that, um, going back to China, China, it's it's a brilliant example. It's a huge country. It's uh, very different from the Western world. Uh, it's the financial power, which means they've got their own infrastructures, their own internet, their own payment networks, and all of those things. It's, it's natural. Um, I remember back in the 90s and early 2000s even, U.S. and Europe were very different in, in terms of, of payments, um, even nowadays to some extent. Um, but you, imagine going to China and you need to pay. Which provider are you going to use? You are going to use the local providers. Why? Because that's widely adopted over there, um, beside the politics, obviously, that we all know. So. A nice, interesting story about China, actually, and it's it's nice to go and dig into that and um, read more about that. 
China in 2018 actually proposed the uh, whole new digital economy infrastructure, as they call it, which is um, basically everything uh, going digital. So your payments, uh, your salary is linked to the uh, to your tax declarations, the money you spend, your income, your uh, even your holiday, your approvals, your uh, documents, your per- any personal documents that you may need to issue. It's a fully digital economy. Um, it's what all European countries are actually trying to achieve. And now there are different schemes and different programs that we want to have a, uh, in Europe, a universal database with a lot of different documents and um, things for our personal use. In China, that's already happening. Um, the beautiful thing about China, for me at least, is that they managed to build most of those financial related uh, topics and tasks uh, on, on blockchain. Why on blockchain? Because it's easier to monitor and facilitate a wide scope of operations. So it's not just your financial transactions, it's also information about personal information about the person, for example, name, surname, where that person lives, what it does, if it needs to digitally digitally sign any contracts. So all of those are happening in a beautiful digital environment. Obviously, it's controlled by the government. Um, uh, That is a centralized uh, body, a centralized authority, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad thing. It's a fully digital, it's a great solution. Uh, and the people there can do everything digitally. Do people care if it's blockchain or non-blockchain based? Not really. Does it matter? Yeah, it matters for us professionals um, and to a greater extent to the people as well. Because if you have a good solid technology, then you can scale it up, you can expand it, and you can easily connect it to uh, more international networks and connect the world essentially one day. Thank you for watching. If you like that video and you want to watch the full episode, it's available here. Remember to like, subscribe and share. It helps the channel.